Okay, we are back. Um, let me fix, I don't like this filter. And then I'm going to have Coach Bronson join me. Okay, those filters are crazy. One second, let me start again. Hey everyone. Okay, this looks good. Um, Coach Bronson. Okay, let's send an invite again. Accept. Okay. All right. Hey. Third time's a charm, right? You know what it is? Sometimes the VPN has all kinds of, like, I always need to remember to disable my VPN every time I'm having all kinds of issues yeah. with my uh, internet, you yeah. know? So I disabled it. Maybe that's that's making it work now. How are yeah. you? I'm good. good. I'm doing good. fantastic. How are you? How's your cruise? Oh, it was great. It yeah. was really, really, I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> it was actually awful. What? <laughs> yeah, that was just like it was like great. That's just normally what you see when people say, "How are you?" I'm doing great. It was it was yeah. awful. Um, when you are carnivore on a cruise and you don't drink alcohol, it's kind of like you go nuts because there is nothing there to do but eat. Mm -hmm. And then the events were the performances weren't that great it was like the, the highlight were the burgers that we had it was a burger joint it made really good burgers so be waiting let's go have the burgers now <laughs> and then it was like two comedy shows okay. um on, you know 30 minutes each yeah. that were funny but that was it you know out of five nights two comedy shows it was it was not not recommended maybe in the future i feel like because also this wasn't our first cruise, so we already are like used to the basic stuff. Maybe if it right, were right. our, if it, yeah, if it was our first, be like, yay, this is awesome. But um, I so, think in the future maybe focus on 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 like a, a cruise that has like the craziest performance and stuff, like anything to overcome the fact that you're only eating meat, <laughs> you know. And there's <laughs> yeah, well, that, so, you don't have that fast time. Yeah. So we did the low carb cruise last year. You did. And we're doing it again this year. I highly recommend that you come. Really? Okay. Absolutely. When is it this it's year? It's in June this year, I believe. It's going out of Galveston, Texas, oh, okay. and I think it's okay. Honduras, and it's all the it's all the gold stuff. Mm. Okay. Okay. I've it's heard about it. I've I've heard about it for years. Um, and it's just like right now I'm thinking like cruise, ugh, you know, but um, I well, think like, yeah, maybe if you go someplace where everybody is. Yeah. So, not I mean, it's not the whole boat, right? It's just a group of us on the boat that are part of the conference, but it's going to be, I think we had like almost 300 people last year. We're hoping to have like 500 people this year. Wow. Um, but I mean, I'm going to be there. Nat's going to be there. Dr. Barry and Nisha will be there. Dave Feldman's going to be there. Nurse Cindy's going to be there. Like, there's a ton of people that'll be there speaking and talking and whatever else. So I think you would have a blast. Really? Spend a week on a boat with all of us. I, I'm sure I would. The only thing is I would have to convince my hubby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go watch pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Come on. We'll all, we'll all eat meat together. We'll all get together and go eat meat together. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'll start working on it from now. There you go. Hey, Dr. Barry's on. What's up, Dr. Barry? Dr. Barry's in the house. Hello. We're gonna do. We're gonna do something soon. Me and Dr. Barry, like maybe a live or or an interview. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and yeah. Dr. Barry, I was. If in case you missed it, I was just telling her to. She needs to come on the cruise. The low carb cruise. The low carb cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, actually, Dr. Barry told me about that when we were in reverse in Costa Rica shooting the TV show. He, yeah. he was telling me all about it. And so I, I keep hearing good things about it. So yeah, that, that might be, yeah, yeah, that might be fun. Awesome. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, um, we're going to talk about fitness and not, yes. fitness, not fitness whole pizza in my mouth either. We're going to talk about, um, <laughs> I guess because we talked a little bit about, you know, you you have some things that you help people with on the fitness side of things. Um, 
definitely my focus is on helping people understand how important fitness is in the whole equation. Yeah. And we're talking about quality of life. It's not just fat loss. Um, so mm. uh, I think mm. one of the things that a lot of people get challenged with when it comes to fitness is the minute they hear the word exercise mm-hmm. or fitness, they automatically go, that's too hard. I don't that's know too to hard. Do. Yeah. I don't know what to do. That's too hard. It's too complicated. It's freaky. It's scary. I'm I'm embarrassed. Like all of these negative things. Yeah, about- yeah. So I uh, maybe maybe we can just talk a little bit about you know what it means to improve your physical ability. Yeah. And yeah. How if you're familiar with the term effective minimum dose. Yeah. And that's, absolutely. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to train for a marathon in order to get fit, right? Right. Um, I think starting slow and starting with bite-sized chunks of exercise goals is always the best strategy. You want to build momentum, you know? I didn't start lifting and going with like, like heavy weights and compound movements until, you know, after years of being physically active and doing other kinds, I would do calisthenics. Um, I would, you know, run or walk, things like that. And then eventually you will naturally want to push the limits and then you will learn more complex or compound exercise. So I would say if you really want to have a, a well structure exercise program you really need to focus on two things you need to focus on some form of weightlifting it could be body weight to begin with we call that calisthenics and cardio now the stretching thing sometimes what ends up happening if you're doing carnivore i feel a lot of our audience can do is doing carnivore Mm -hmm. What you notice is that you need far less mobility work, far less stretching, because you're not as achy. You don't have all of the aches and pains and the soreness that normally comes when you're eating plant foods, when you're having all the salads. And so it really cuts down on the amount of time that you would have to dedicate for that. And I am not convinced, and I know that goes against like the official guidelines, like you need the cardio, the weight training, and you need the stretching. I am not convinced that stretching is as equally important as the other two. Yeah. Um, but that's so, the whole other Yeah. Yeah, there's a balance between that because I think stretching is a component of what we call mobility. And a lot of people confuse the two. They hear the word mobility and think, oh, I'm going to go stretch. Well, that's not actually what it is. Mobility is actually an ability. It's two things. It's the, an ability to reach ranges of motion, functional mm-hmm. ranges of motion, with an ability to manage, resist, or move weight in those positions. Mm-hmm. It's the combination mm-hmm. of the two. So it's not just can I put my hands over my head, but can I put my hands over head and maintain a position that I'm not going to hurt my shoulders if I'm holding something or if I'm pushing something or pulling something. So it's a combination yeah. of proper technique, range of motion, and strength all combined. Yeah. That's what mobility is. It's not just stretching. Yeah. And you know something that when I used to teach for ACSM, the American College of Sports Medicine, I would conduct their workshops where I would prepare the um, – the students who wanted to take a personal trainer certification with them, which by the way, is like the hardest one to pass. It's like 60% pass rate from the first try. So I've did that for years. And I remember um, when we would follow their guidelines, they would mention that stretching actually can be met with weight training. When Mm. you're actually doing weight training, you also increase range of motion, which is the opposite of what a lot of people think. They think that, you know, if you're just focused on weight training, it's going to contract the muscle. And that's not necessarily true. So if I am an ACSM certified personal trainer and I'm following the guidelines, I can utilize some form of weight training in the beginning to warm up the body and meet some of the range of motion stretching um, goals. And then I'll do the heavier lift. Yeah. So that's another thing to keep in mind. It really cuts down on the amount of time that you spend in the gym. Absolutely. And that's where the, the focus on technique comes into play. Cause you can't, a lot of the, here's the reason why many people think that building muscle and getting stronger and working out is going to, limit their range of motion is because mm-hmm. a lot of people, particularly bodybuilders, mm-hmm. don't work in full ranges of motion. They're trying to target specific muscle groups right. to that, Isolation. Work that is not functional. Yeah. So their ranges 
the motion are limited. You've got people that, and their muscles are so big, and they've got, like, they can't even put their hands up, they can't touch their back, like all these things. If you are using your exercise, whether that's your warm up, your actual work, or your cool down, if you're moving in the ranges of motion that allow functional performance, then you're going to improve that range of motion, whether you're stretching specifically for that or not. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, you want to be careful with isolation exercise. Um, like when you're using machines that mainly targets one tiny little muscle, a lot of those exercises are contraindicated. I also remember from the ACSM workshops, um, for example, the leg extension that targets the quadriceps mm -hmm. muscles on the machine. A lot of people love of that machine right and it's actually a contraindicated exercise because it isolates the quads and it's not a functional movement so it can increase the amount of pressure placed on the knee which can lead to very high risk of injury and you, your knee could literally blow up so there are things that we need to remember if you're just doing an overall exercise program for your just general fitness do compound movements that mimic natural movements like squats and deadlifts whereby it's multiple major muscle groups moving at the same time this doesn't mean there is no application for isolation exercises of course you can do especially in terms of like physical therapy if you want to rehabilitate a muscle after an injury you want to bring that muscle strength back up to match all the other muscles that's great and in bodybuilding i know sometimes we just have to do that if we're doing a type of symmetry training right we're sculpting mm -hmm. the body for a for a competition that's different but yeah the risk of injury can definitely be higher because never in nature do we ever isolate the quads right. and have it move by itself without also activating the low the core muscles right your abs and your lower back and you know everything together yeah, that's so, a really good, yeah. that's a really good uh, reminder to everybody is that if you're starting a program and everyone's going to start at a different place, sometimes you may start with, you know, the, the, the lowest barrier to entry to the gym is I'm just going to do that little machine circuit at Planet Fitness where they've got 10 machines and I'm just going to go do those. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's yeah. how you're going to get started. At some point, you want to yeah. move into doing movements where your abs are working every single time. So I like to tell people when you're doing functional fitness, Every exercise is an ab workout. It's if true. You're doing, if you're doing it properly. I don't train abs. Um, yeah, I yeah. remember, yeah, I stopped training abs. I remember after um, reading about a study that literally, so, so we do studies where we do EMGs, electromyographies, which is... Um, you literally put patches on the muscles mm -hmm. to measure how much um, activity um, they're, they're doing, how, how activated they are. And uh, turns out if you're doing a lat pull down, a lat cable pull down, not, not the lat pull down where you're sitting, but you're yeah. standing up on the cable machine and you're bringing it in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. That turns out to activate your ab muscles way more than just doing simple crunches. Because right. <laughs> then there's nice. weight involved in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like, it, it makes no sense to train your abs. Now, of course, again, if you're a bodybuilder and you have very low body fat already, so we know it's not like the fat is hiding your abs and you want to compete or you just want your ab muscles to pop out then you can do more targeted ab exercises but you also want to be using weights but that's a very you know small chunk of the population that would need to do that and that's probably not most of the people that are watching in either of our channels right we I, we deal with people that are just trying to improve their quality of life and just get better and feel better and be stronger in general exactly um, i think one of the things that people need to understand too when it comes to fitness is not only is it super easy to get started because it's just do more than you're doing now that's really, yes. really all it is. If you start doing more, your body will adapt to what you're doing, and then you can do a little more, and then eventually you're going to want to keep adding to that. So it doesn't take a lot to get started, and we can maybe get into that. But the other thing is, is to understand that it's not about how you look. It's not about your weight loss. It's not about aesthetics. That can be a part of the motivation that someone has, but in the development of the human body, it's biological it's physiological and it's neurological and there's phases that we go through in that progression so as a beginner if i'm somebody who's never worked out before and i'm trying to learn how to do these exercises and get into a routine and figure this stuff out the the greatest portion of the adaptation that i'm having in my body is in my brain not in my not in my muscle right so i'm learning 
how to build those mind muscle connections. I'm building neural pathways. I'm improving my coordination and my balance and the way that my brain controls my body more than I am building muscle. So some people get frustrated when they first get started. Well, I've been doing this for three months and I'm not getting stronger. I'm not getting bigger. Well, you're going to be able to lift more weight, but it's not because you've added muscle. It's because your brain's working your body better. And there's a whole mm-hmm. different level of connection and how that process works. That's so true inflammation really affects your level of intensity and it's so funny because in the past we'd be like have the carbs and then utilize them to lift better every time i used to try those things let me do a carb or do a cheat and the next day i should be stronger it actually was worse because i was so inflamed yeah. i couldn't lift those parts Follow and it was like this makes no sense yeah. yes exactly it's funny, it's funny you say that too because recently i've been i've had some videos that I've been talking to Bart K, Dr. Sibus, working with some other people a lot recently, and the idea of the central governor theory that Tim Noakes put out in the 70s, which is crazy to think it's that long ago, um, that he's had this theory. Um, but then the idea that, which never occurred to me, so I'm certified, I've been training for 12 years, right? And just in the last year or so, did the concept of glycogen depletion not being a thing actually like the light bulb go off in my head like we can't we we talk about glycogen i mean i've heard for years i've heard about you're going to deplete your glycogen stores you have to have carbs replete to replenish your glycogen blah 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 and it's like well wait a second dr Sivas mentioned this to me in one of my talks with him he said think about this if you your muscles require glycogen to function so so how can you deplete your glycogen stores and Mm -hmm. still move your arm Right. Well, it's been your studied. Muscles and it's would, been your muscles would literally no, yeah. yeah, they would literally stop working if you depleted your records. Yeah. Like a so it's not a thing. It is not. And it had, I mean, we have very clear scientific evidence yeah. that your glycogen stores do not get depleted. Even if you've been keto uh, for over two years, this was Stephen Finney and Jeff Volick, yeah. um, pioneers yeah. in ketogenic diet research. They've done this study. I remember reading about it a long time ago, but now you can go to virtahealth.com and they have all the studies listed there. And um, they've done it on athletes who have been keto um, for, for like six months to two years. And all of them, they show that even after an exercise, um, session, their glycogen stores are the same as the carbohydrate uh, loaded athletes, right? And so I think, I mean, that's it. Case closed, <laughs> right? It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. What I wanted to mention earlier, because you were talking about something very important, like, yeah, it's not just about weight loss. And most of the time, I feel like when you go carnivore and start losing weight more easily, the drive to exercise goes down a little bit because before we were like training so hard to overcome all of the addictive foods we were eating. And so I I want people to resist the urge to get too comfortable without exercise because it really helps, like you mentioned, every area of your body, especially the brain. Studies have shown that exercise is just as powerful, if not more powerful than antidepressants. Because remember, a lot of antidepressant research that we have, there suffers from publication bias, right? The pharmaceutical companies are far more likely to publish only the positive effects of antidepressants so imagine the all the body of work of buried research that shows no improvement from antidepressants that has never seen the light of day so we're comparing the exercise results to a small a sliver of published research that shows that maybe you know antidepressants work so why go that route when we know it's your natural antidepressant anxiolytic it relieves your anxiety that's why i make sure i i keep lifting and i keep training cardio and that's another thing yeah. you need both right, right? weightlifting is fantastic fantastic to reach every single major muscle group in your body great but you can't target the heart muscle what targets the heart muscle is cardiovascular activity making sure your heart rate goes up and is sustained for an extended period of time yeah. and so you need both yeah i would actually take that a step further and say that there's different ways that our bodies process fuel um and not, not even different ways it's all the same way but there's different levels of priority bart k calls it gears right so we process fuel the same way but there's different focuses based on the activity that we're doing where it's pulling the majority of the substrate from 
So we have the phosphogenic pathway, we have the glycolytic pathway, we have the oxidative pathway. Our body's doing things a little bit differently based on the activity we're doing. And we need to get good at doing all three of them. So we need to get good at lifting heavy in short bursts. We need to be, get good at sprinting and doing high intensity intervals for a short period of time. We need to get good at doing slower intensity for longer periods of time activity as well. So yeah. all three of those things need to happen. And we tend to bundle that into the cardio phrase, but it's really just, there's different things that we do for different periods of time at different intensities. And we need to try to include as much of that in our plan as possible. Fantastic. Yeah, I love it. And I think it's really important to give our audience like a basic framework. Like what are the recommendations for the minimum effective dose that we talked about earlier? So I'm just going to talk about cardio. Um, let's do the cardio first. So cardio, mm -hmm. you would want to do 20 minutes, three days a week, if it's a vigorous intensity. So if you're a beginner, you're not going to be able to do that, right? Because you're not going to be able to train at a vigorous intensity, nor should you feel the pressure to do so. That's fine. But if you're not a beginner, you can definitely just get 20 minutes, three days a week of vigorous intensity, cardiovascular activity. So you've met your cardiovascular needs. Now, if you're a beginner, then you can do moderate intensity exercise on five days a week for also 20 minutes. So that's if that's really not a lot, you know, and that, you, you can even bunch it together in one session or two sessions. It doesn't have to be every single day or five days. Yeah, a week. and that doesn't even mean running on a treadmill or doing elliptical. That could be doing some kind of activity with weights, right? If if anybody's done a good a good weightlifting routine where there's high volume or supersets, you're gonna be sweating. You're gonna have have your heart rate up you're going to be working through that point and you you're you're using weights to meet that cardio requirement so there's a lot of different ways if anybody's ever done sled sprints right or anything like that like there's there's a lot of different ways that you can get that hurt because it's about getting your heart rate up if you're not sweating and you're not yes a little bit out of breath that's what we're looking for yeah yeah yeah, it's, it's just about keeping that heart rate up for a sustained period of time. You, yeah. Whichever way you can do it, just keep that heart rate up. So good, we're done with cardio. Now with strength training, basically you can get by minimum effective dose again with just two sets per week per major muscle group. So you can literally get by with just two days a week doing a full body strength training protocol where you target every major muscle group at least 12 repetitions. And so that's one set, one set of 12 repetitions for every major muscle group. And you, then you do it again in the same week and just leave like a day or two in between mm -hmm. to recover, allow the muscles to recover. That's, that's nothing. You can literally do 20 minutes of a whole body strength training workout, let's say on Monday, and another 20 minutes whole body workout on Friday, and you are good with strength training. Now, of course, I want you to push yourself, and you will want to push yourself eventually and keep, you know, lifting heavier and heavier. But to start, it's fine to just do that. And then if you don't have a lot of time, just focus on always increasing the intensity. As you increase the intensity, you don't need to do as much volume of work. Yeah, and that's, and that's the thing. It's the, the technique comes first. So intensity doesn't mean anything if you're not doing it right. So make sure you're doing it as properly as possible, always first. Then secondly is the number of reps are far less important than the intensity and the, the effort that you're putting into those reps. So yeah. if you're looking at a weight, you know, like, okay, I've got this weight. Yeah. Um, I can only get 10. Try to get 11. The last rep, that last one or two reps that are you pushing your absolute hardest when we're talking about weight training, those are the reps that are going to count. Okay. So you don't need, need to do, yeah. I, see, I see so many people that are like, oh, I'm doing 30 reps or whatever. That's not doing anything for you. Right. To find something that's challenging for 8 to 12 reps and right. really challenging. Like, I don't... I, I, one of the guidelines I like to give people, I say, if you don't have a little question in the back of your mind, whether you can get all of these reps or not, then it's not heavy enough. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I love to tell my students always, uh, all the time when we're talking about the prescription of, of strength training. 
choose the weight that you can lift. So when I say 12 reps is all you need, then choose the weight that you can lift 12 times. And if you try to lift it the 13th time, you must fail. That is the appropriate weight. Yeah. And so if you can keep going for another 50, it's like you're not doing anything there. Might as well just, you know, sit down, relax, and <laughs> enjoy your day. <laughs> well, what's the point? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And then the, the, next, the next piece of it, too, is um, for beginners, remember, your brain is learning before your body is. Okay, mm -hmm. so once things start happening, once you start going, oh, I'm getting sore, oh, I'm feeling it here, I'm feeling when you can start saying where you feel the work that you're doing, mm -hmm. that's when you know you're making progress. Yeah. When you can start Especially the beginning. Yeah. and say, oh, this is a curl, I'm supposed to feel it in my bicep, and actually do the movement and feel it in your bicep, then you know you're making progress, whether you live, you're looking heavy or not. Yeah. Uh, that mind-muscle connection is everything right especially yeah i, I want to say especially later on but i think it's equally important in the beginning because you want to have a good solid base of a uh, of activating the accurate muscle because then you're going to progress a lot faster because you're actually training the muscle 100 percent, right? right so i think it's always worth it to focus on that and make that a priority over ego lifting and just going with like all the momentum to live the heaviest space that yeah. you can i i get how motivating it is to hit new weights i get it you but you're gonna get there faster i promise you if you focus on the mind muscle connection first and if you move again like we talked about earlier if you move in the full range of motion in that movement right because we're not just talking about mobility we're talking about muscle fiber activation and if i'm not extending my arm all the way and, and, and maximizing that stretch reflex then i'm yeah. not getting that full muscle fiber activation when i do the eccentric and bring it back in exactly exactly yeah fantastic so yeah i feel like that's that's a really good starting point sure. and then eventually um you will want to keep you know getting better and better i remember the first time i really started lifting super heavy was a few years ago when i was still doing my doctorate at um and i remember telling my professor uh because he was an exercise physiologist and mm -hmm. i remember telling him just feel different i feel like like the mental clarity the energy because it was the first time i was very serious about really really lifting heavy weights you know like getting uh, high numbers on my squats and things like that yeah, i had yeah. never before you know challenged myself that way you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah and um, so this is a we're talking about gym the gym you know working out doing resistance training and this stuff but just take it down a notch for the people that are maybe struggling with you know, it's hard for me to walk up the stairs. Mm. The idea of going to the gym and working out with equipment is just so far beyond where they are right now. If you're at a position where your your struggle is just getting through your day, getting around your house and doing things like that, then just remember that 1% rule. It doesn't take a lot more, 1% more than what you're doing right now. So find the thing that is physically challenging because remember, we're talking about physical ability and quality of life. So if walking up and down the stairs is difficult for you, do it more often until it becomes easy. So then yeah. your exercise plan is I'm going to walk up and down the stairs five times a day. And then eventually I'm going to do it six times a day. And then I'm going to do it seven times a day. And you can get to that point where now walking up and down the stairs is easy for you. And what you have done is you have literally changed your ability to function and improve your quality of life. Exactly. And all you did is walk up and down the stairs. It doesn't take long. Exactly. Momentum is huge. I agree. Okay. Uh, a good little uh, hack that you can use, go on YouTube. There are really great and fun step, like at home stepping um, workout videos. You literally turn it on and there's music and it's like, it follows the rhythm, it follows the beat. So it's really fun. And you're literally just moving, you know, to the right, to the left, to the front, to the back. And that's going to also motivate you to start moving, get that blood flow going. And then you'll rack up the steps right there. And that's it's going to help you drop body weight even further and hopefully you're doing carnivore and both of those things together is going to dramatically drop the overall inflammation in your body and allow your strength to return but at the same time we also have to build our strength back up again it's not enough to just drop the weight on carnivore and not challenge our muscles because the only way they're going to grow is by applying pressure exactly cool yeah awesome. this is a lot. That was cool.
Does anybody, did anybody, have, I saw so many people are coming through. Does anybody have any questions? Have you yeah. seen questions? Give us your questions. Ayana, are you still there? I, I'm seeing you, but I, I don't have the, I am normally very good at multitasking, but I don't know if I'm that great at multitasking to answer you back while still pretend that I'm fully focused here. So um, let, let us know, because actually Ayana, I'm going to be seeing her um, in, let's see, oh, in 20 minutes. That's my <laughs> client consult that I told you about. But yeah, give us your questions or your experiences. Are you working out? I feel like the carnivore community, there's a general group that doesn't really like to work out or even like criticizes too much exercise. And, and I get it. It's because exercise historically has been associated with trying to outrun a bad diet. And I think Yes, that's that's true, but it doesn't mean that we completely forget about exercise. You know, yeah. we, we you can, still you can, yeah. You can, you can lose fat without exercising, but you can't live your best life without physical ability. It's not possible. One hundred percent. Yeah. You cannot have access to all of the things that life has to offer if you can't use your body appropriately. The number one best indicator for how long you're going to live is your grip strength which is proportional to your overall strength in your body. That's a test we used to do with research, right? And so the stronger you are overall, the, the stronger your grip strength on that little dynamometer machine thing that um, we used to test it. And the greater your numbers, the more likely the, that you're going to live longer. Dennis, hey, Dennis. Better to do cardio first or strength training first? Oh, that's a great question. My students ask me this every semester. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go? Um, there's no reason you can't do both at the same time. If you're going to do one, you can do the other in 99% of the cases. If you had to make a choice between the two, someone's holding a gun to your head or whatever, you could only choose one, strength training wins every single time. Build muscle, improve your metabolic rate, it's going to improve your, your, your energy storage, it's going to improve your, it's going to improve your cardiovascular performance. And, and everything else. So building muscle is usually always going to be the answer to any question. Yes, I, I agree. For most people, most of the time when I get asked this question, it's coming from a place of like just overall um, exercise program, which yeah. what should I do first? So for just overall health and fitness, um, I would go with strength training first. It's a more complex form of exercise. You need that mind-muscle connection. You need it, it, it takes more effort overall, not just physically, yeah. but also mentally. Um, and so, yeah, I always recommend doing that first, and then you can finish off with some cardio. The thing that's going to dictate whether or not you're going to put on muscle is the intensity and frequency of your workouts. So it's not like if I do my strength training and then I run, I won't be able to put on muscle. No, it's, it doesn't work like that. There is something to say about maybe slightly separating them, but there's really no good data to support that. It's just the practice that bodybuilders do, just because they're scared of looking at them. Like well, yeah, yeah. That's the, the number one mistake is, is comparing what we're doing from a quality of life perspective to what bodybuilders do. We need to start separating that conversation because they're totally different things. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think... Yeah. He, even the bodybuilders could still achieve oh, their absolutely. goals, even if they do them one after the other. Because I know a lot of bikini competitors, they'll, they'll lift and then they'll do their, um, their, their cardio and they're, and they're winning the pro status, pro cards and everything. So I think you could do both. Let's see. Um, Demetrius Dean, how do you stay hydrated? I drink tons of water and still dehydrated. Um, are you drinking coffee? So water and electrolytes, make sure you're putting enough salt and uh, maybe taking magnesium, things like that. Uh, when you don't eat carbs, it's easier for your body to be hydrated because the carbs aren't hogging all the water and retaining all the water, right? Yeah. yeah and I recommend um, drinking a lot of water is great, but if it's just plain water, it's not really doing anything for you. So I recommend for my clients and pretty much anybody I talk to that you never drink water if it doesn't have electrolytes in it. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I go about doing it. And that usually helps people a lot. Yeah. Especially I feel like in the first six months. I feel like yeah, in the well, first few months I mean, of doing the keto yeah. or carnivore, that's yeah, that's very sure. helpful to help you in that sure. transition. And I yeah. I've been doing it for five years and I still don't I don't drink anything if it doesn't have salt or high put electrolytes in it. So do you do the do you do the sweetened ones or do you do just plain salty either, water? Either or. Uh, sometimes I'll just do Redmond. Sometimes I do Element. I do Element a lot though. We have a ton of it. 
So uh, yeah. yeah, I do element. Okay. And then um, Demetrius, oh no, uh, Jam Luke 23. Any tips for loose skin after weight loss? Ooh, I, so I'm working with a client who wants to do that. Do you, you want to go ahead and yeah, share I, your, your... Uh, this is something that I, I have people ask me all the time. Yeah. Most of my yeah. clients are women over 40, and this is a common question that I get. Yeah. And I, I don't think we talk about it enough in a realistic perspective. There's yeah. not much you can do. No amount, yeah. no amount of fasting, no amount of collagen, no amount of muscle. You're not going to build, the average person is not going to, if they've lost 100, 150 pounds and they have a whole bunch of loose skin, yeah. the average person is not going to build enough muscle to make all that loose skin go away. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so, even though 100% carnivore lion diet over a period of time may help some, it may mm -hmm. get some of that elasticity back and it may get rid of some of it. But if you have a lot of skin because you've lost a ton of weight, you have to understand. You either have to learn how to live with that and accept it as a badge of success, or if you don't like it, then you have you may have to go through some surgery to get rid of it. But in the 12 yeah. years that I've been doing this, I have never seen anybody. I've never had a single person who had excess skin that it just magically disappeared. I mean, so I mean, the I, real reality of it. Yeah. The the only thing I would add to that is um, checking out Kelly Hogan. So Kelly Hogan has been carnivore for like th 13 years or more uh, at this point. And she had a lot of loose skin when she first lost the weight because she lost a tremendous amount of body fat. And so the thing that she said is that um, she had a lot more right after her weight loss and but she could never afford because it's very expensive to go do to all those surgeries right? right she could never afford to do that and so she didn't really like worry much about that and over time it got a lot lot better it doesn't mean that she doesn't have loose skin she still does but compared to the initial you know following the uh fat loss she she definitely says that she's lost a lot of that loose skin i guess the body absorb it absorbs it or or you know something so i but i can't you know i don't have like pictures before and after i don't know if she has some of that that would be great if she could share mm -hmm. how much loose skin it was and how much it is right now so we can like yeah, visually yeah. see the difference yeah, yeah, so, yeah that's that's like like a hopeful thing but that's the only person that i personally know who has had experience with that right now i'm working with a client who wants to achieve that without surgery so i will report back to you if we do get some success in like maybe a year or two because i told him it's gonna be it's gonna take some time like i'm on board i will help you do everything that we could possibly try um before because he he really doesn't want to go through the surgery route, at least not now. We, we're, we're, at least we're going to try and do it for a few years and see if that works. Yeah. 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 Um, keto Fit Vegas, Ayana. Um, electrolytes for hydration can help. Yes, yes, I agree. For hydration, you do need those electrolytes to keep that water um, in your body, um, retained in your body. Uh, Ayana, thank you for saying this. Some groups say you can fast it away. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I want to believe it, but at the same time, we need data. We need evidence. And it's, yeah. And I've never, never, and I've never seen it, so. Yeah. You know what it is, too? A lot of people lose weight not doing carnival, right? They're doing just a psycho, like a calories in, calories out. And maybe maybe the way that you lose weight has an impact, you know? So because if Kelly Hogan's experience was beneficial like she was actually able to um have some loose skin go away by itself maybe it was because right. she did it in a carnivore way so i don't know if because the, for example the client i'm working with he did psycho lost all the weight with just calories and calories out but now he wants to try now implement the carnivore diet and see if it helps moving forward you know so we don't know but we're going for it and i'll definitely report back and, and let you know if we do have any success um joe replicator ideas to break the stalemate with my weight well i have a lot of ideas there <laughs> do you want to go first break a break a weight um stalemate. break a stall wait, yeah. yeah there's so many things we could talk about um the way that I look at stalls, guys, is a couple things. Um, either your plan isn't working and you need to change it because you've changed enough to where the plan, the plan needs to be updated or you're not working. 
That's, that's really, that's really that's it. it. It's either you're not doing the things you need to do or the things that you think you need to do aren't working anymore and you need to find some new things to do. So, and that, that's a whole, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into that. Um, are you still doing keto treats? Are you still doing carnivore treats? Are you still trying to replicate foods that were making you unhealthy before, but just calling them carnivore or calling them keto? Um, are you drinking alcohol? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you moving your body? Are you still drinking sodas and, and diet drinks because they're zero calorie? Are you still drinking coffee? I mean, we could go, are you putting a bunch of fat on everything that you eat? Uh, the list goes on and on and on. So figuring out yeah. something, and here's, here's a guiding principle. Most of us know there's something that we're doing in our journey that's stalling us. Most of us are not willing to stop it. So if you have something that you know in the back of your head is something you should probably be doing, but you've been resisting taking that out of your life for a while to see what happens, then you, that's your, there's, there's your thing. That's your low-hanging fruit. That's your minimum dose. Yes. The thing that you're resisting is the thing that you need to cut out and see what happens. And 90% of the time, it's going to help you forward. Great answer. Um, yesterday, I was doing some research. I'm going to post that YouTube video sometime soon. Um, did you know sugar? There's actual at least two studies that I went through and read last night that prove, at least in rats, that sugar is more addictive than heroin. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, heard that before, you know, yeah. that's crazy. Okay, so that's number one. Most of the time, we're still doing the artificial sweeteners. We're still addicted. Even though we're doing carnivore, we're still addicted. I remember when I started doing carnivore, up until not that long ago, yeah. I was still doing the Quest bars. I was still doing yeah. the artificial sweeteners and stuff. Um, and that's a real addiction. And for yeah. some people, sugar can be more addictive than heroin. And as a matter of fact, just look around you. Look around you. Everybody's addicted. So it would make sense that it's far more addictive than hard drugs. Well, so, it's also easier to get, right? It's so much what? easier to get. It's easier to get. So that yeah. doesn't help in the whole situation. And you, you had Natalie on, my girlfriend, Coach Nat, the Keto Bikini Pro on Instagram, if you guys want to go follow her. Um, you had her on recently. And because of your conversation, we started the Lion Diet. So we're about a weekend to the Lion Diet. Um, we were just talking last night or this morning about how limiting what she's eating to the point where there are no options to make fake versions of real food. Right, yeah. no options to have the protein ice cream and the this and the that and the other things. Going yes. to the diet, it takes all that stuff out. So yeah. now it's like, well, I don't have any other choice but to eat meat, and that's it. Like I don't have an, uh, I don't have a, a comfort food that I can go to because I'm taking that out of the equation. And it's already within a week. It's already making them helping her make a mindset shift around the right. thing, those connections, detaching from those things. It's so, so absolutely so Yeah, those things, like right away, you can very quickly don't go down that addictive rabbit hole, even though you're still carnivore. But when you keep those little things, that's another major way you're, you're not going to lose weight. Calories still matter. I know that's controversial for whatever reason these days. Calories... Yeah. Still matter let's, on carnivore. Let's, re, let's rephrase that and say that overconsumption of energy matters. Yes. I like exactly. that phrase a lot better. I, I like that phrase a lot better. We, we don't want Bart coming after us. <laughs> that's <laughs> just how they want to go there. Okay, that's fine. So, yeah, I mean, a calorie, if we want to define a calorie, how do we know? Like, what is a calorie? Right. It's basically the amount of heat energy emitted that would raise the temperature of a certain amount of water by one degree. Right. All right. Cool. Well, see, here's, yeah. and this is the cool thing, right? A calorie <laughs> is just like saying 32 degrees Celsius or zero yeah. degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. A calorie is a measurement of energy, just like when we say it's 82 degrees outside. We can't yeah. eat 82 degrees. We can't <laughs> right. eat calories. It's the same. It's literally the same thing. There's a reason we came up with the term calorie because we need an easy way to communicate with one another right. about that. So, and anybody, because I know I still have clients uh, and, and students and people I work with who are genuinely scared of reaching a plateau and never being able to budge below that. Ooh. And I'm like, it is Possible to, to for that to happen. Otherwise, we would never worry about starvation. 
starvation, starving to death wouldn't be a thing in the world if there is a certain human body that can potentially stop losing fat. It just doesn't happen like that. Now we can make the process easier to happen and then for us to maintain it, right? By doing the, by eating our species specific diet, but it is impossible, it's physically impossible to hit a plateau and not be able to drop body fat beyond that, as long as you're creating a caloric deficit. Right, well, and here's the other thing too, is we, my big, my big thing, you, we've talked about this before, is I wanna get people to stop talking about weight loss. If we're talking yeah. about improving metabolic function, if we're talking about improving quality of life and physical ability, mm -hmm. then that mm -hmm. opens up the door to 50 other things that you can look at to determine your progress. So who cares if you, if you hit a plateau and you never lose another pound, but you're getting stronger, you're fixing your hormones, you're fixing yeah. autoimmune dis issues, you're fixing your gut health, you're able to move your body without aches and pains, you can play with your grandkids, like all of these things, if all of these other things, you're getting stronger, you're improving coordination, you're getting more balance. If all of those things are getting better, now you have a whole bunch of different metrics that you can use to say, yeah. how is my life improving? which is a much yeah. better question than am I losing weight? Right. I agree with you. I still feel sometimes um, it can play like mental tricks on us if we're not dropping body fat. And oh, it's sure. almost impossible, right, for people not to drop body fat if they're doing the lion diet. So if people are struggling because they have other ailments and stuff, I think just go with the lion diet. It's going to absolutely prevent you from overeating beyond your natural capacity. And then even if you don't have too much capacity to move around and create a larger caloric deficit, you're still going to drop weight on a lion diet. That would be my recommendation because I've had experiences myself and with my clients where let's not focus on you know dropping body fat and let's just do carnivore for a while and eventually mentally it's like you want to feel some form of momentum and it's just such a powerful motivator mm -hmm. to also see your body dropping body fat remember fat is inflammatory so it actually even helps you feel better when you get rid of any extra yeah. unnecessary stored fat cells that are constantly releasing inflammatory molecules into yeah. your um, bloodstream. Yeah. And, so that, yeah. That's and, a, and I'll take the opposite side. I'll, I'll play devil's advocate and say muscle is anti-inflammatory. So on the same aspect, if you're doing things to increase your muscle mass, you'll have similar effect. So again, everyone looks at different things. Some people may be more motivated by building muscle. Other people may be more motivated by losing fat. But in the end, the end result is we want to make you feel better and live better. However yeah. you approach it. Yeah, as long as you don't give up, yeah. persistence is exactly. undefeated, exactly. right? Yep. And I have to run <laughs> because <laughs> Ayanna's going to kill me if I don't show up, although I know she's watching the live, so <laughs> bear with me for a second. Um, uh, Bronson, what, so why do you, what's your first name? Is it Bronson? Because I just know me as Coach Bronson. That's fine. <laughs> you can know me as Coach. No, my first name is Bronson. Okay. Okay, Bronson, yeah. fantastic. So um, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much Absolutely. for this Absolutely. idea. Let's go, you know, we should do more lives. Yeah. And is there anything else you want to tell everybody? No, just keep doing what you guys are doing. It's like you said, you know, consistency is the key. As long as you don't quit, don't you're going to have some success. So yeah. that's it. Yes. Feel, feel the, the frustration. If you, if, you, if you need to cry on some days, cry. Let it all out. Just... Don't suppress this with drugs like sugars. Yeah. Just don't don't steer off course. You're just gonna set yourself backwards and that it'll definitely not make you feel better anytime soon, right? So Absolutely. just hang in there. Yeah, we're all going through it, but you can totally, totally come out winning on the other side. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. And I'm going to post this on YouTube. Um, so I will make sure I'll post your Instagram. You, you have a YouTube channel, right? You okay. Can, everything, yeah, everything. So my Instagram is here, uh, coach underscore Pete Bronson underscore keto. Yeah. Um, everything else is ultimate ketogenic fitness. So my book, which you can see back here, my YouTube channel, my website, everything is ultimate ketogenic fitness. Fantastic. I'll post those. I'll also post Natalie, since you mentioned Natalie. Uh, I'll post her Instagram as well. She's your yeah. girlfriend. She is a, a pro, a bikini pro, and she has all, also a wealth of knowledge. 
Say hi to Nat. Thank you so much, okay. Bronson. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, everybody, for being with us, and I will see you soon. Bye. Yes. Bye.